Thank you for making the time to be here today. Our guest today is uh, Professor Parish Narayan. Let me just uh, give you a little bit of background on uh, Professor Parish Nar Narayan. Professor Parish Narayan is the Alfred De Deakin Professor from the Deakin University in Melbourne, Australia. The title Alfred Deakin Pro Professor is the highest honour that the University Council can bestow on its staff. The decision by the University's Council to confer this title of Alfred Deakin on six members at one time of staff is testament to the academic and to the academic excellence Deakin is managing to nurture and attract. Currently, Professor Parish Narayan teaches business and financial econometrics in the Faculty of Business and Law at Deakin University. He is currently one of the co-directors in the Center for Economics and Financial Economic Econometric Research. It is a Deakin University Strategic Research Center based in the Faculty of Business and Law. His research interests are applied financial econometrics, energy economics, and financial markets. Today, Professor Parish Narayan will deliver a talk on Islamic finance research. Professor Parish Narayan, the floor is yours. Thank you for your very kind uh, introduction. Thank you also to INSEAD for this uh, very kind uh, invitation for me to be here uh, to share with you uh, some of the research on Islamic finance that uh, I'm doing with my other colleagues in my center. Uh, so what I have here is not a paper presentation. Uh, I'm going to talk uh, very briefly about three major projects, projects that uh, we have finished on Islamic finance and that will give you some sort of uh, uh, idea of the type of research that we are doing. And I will then conclude uh, by talking about some of the work in progress, the things that we are doing now. So it's a, it's a big project on which we have invested some, uh, some funds to collect data. Uh, as you will see, so it's very, very data-driven uh, uh, project on Islamic finance. Okay, uh, so I've divided the, uh, the, the talk into uh, three projects first. So these are the projects that have been finished. Uh, the first project is uh, on the profitability of uh, uh, Islamic stocks. And uh, all these projects that I'm talking about here, uh, they're different in the sense of, well, along two, two lines. Uh, one is these are based on uh, historical time series data, as, as much history as, as we could get, so going back in time. Uh, so this compares with the literature which uh, does not necessarily look at what has happened over time to Islamic finance which is quite important because Islamic finance as a subject area and, and also in practice has developed rapidly. You know, like in the last decade it has sort of been more in the forefront as an asset uh, investment class, right? And we know that. So looking at it historically uh, is the objective, what has happened over time. And also um, in this particular project, we address another issue is if <coughs> If Islamic stocks are profitable over time, then what determines these profits? <coughs> right. 
at, at this. So, uh, you know, we, we try to answer this question more from a finance point of view. In other words, we ask the question, are the profits due to risk or not? Right? So, can you simply make profits by investing in Islamic stocks just because you are taking a risk? Or is it purely due, due to mispricing of stocks? Right? So, it's a, it's a, um, uh, a financial economics question and we, we uh, address that in that framework. Okay, so in this, uh, so this is a paper where we look at uh, how uh, the credit quality of stocks. Okay, so we try to connect with uh, with Islamic stocks and then look at the credit quality ratings of these stocks. And you know, we are very familiar when we talk about credit quality by looking at Standard and Poor's uh, credit ratings. There are different sorts of credit ratings as well, and. There are some very high credit rating stocks, some very low credit rating stocks. So what we do is, as you would know, if you're working on Islamic finance, is that there is no uh, time series data on credit quality. Okay. So you know when I talk about time series, as you will see, I'm talking about I'm taking you back to about the 1980s. So we're looking at a 30-year period of time series, monthly, daily data. So it's a massive data set, not only from an Islamic finance point of view, but from any point of view of academic research. That's a 30 years of data is quite a you know, nice data set if you have it at a monthly uh, or a daily frequency, right? So uh, what we do then, one of the innovations, and uh, as the title here suggests, what is new in our work? Well, the data set is new. So what we do is we create a data set of uh, credit ratings. And what we managed to, so what I put here is 142 stocks have adequate pricing history and ratings available on Bloomberg. So we use that information. And to identify stocks that have outstanding CDS, so that's the credit default spread, instruments and 46 stocks have reliable CDS codes. So we use the CDS codes uh, for about 45 of those stocks. So we, we, what we are trying to do, do here is to uh, create a data set that is both historical in perspective, uh, for which some information is there that we can make use of and, and make it, make it uh, marketable, right? make it usable. And when you add those uh, 142 to 40, uh, 46, we have about 188 stocks. Islamic stocks, uh, going back to 1980s, uh, uh, 1980 to December 2014, and these are Asia Pacific stocks only that we that we uh, consider. All right. So the first thing here is that, and obviously this is joint work with my other uh, other authors and uh, particularly staff who are working with me in the center. 188 Islamic stocks with credit quality information. So. The way you can think of this information is that the probability of default. So what is the probability that firm number one is going to default? And so the probability falls from zero to uh, one. Right. So the lower the probability of default, the higher the credit quality. Okay. So we create a probability, default probability for all the 188 stocks uh, from 1980 to 2014. Now, what is the idea of creating the, uh, the default probabilities of the credit quality information? Well, what it means is that we can then distribute uh, the 188 stocks into different portfolios. Right? So the portfolios we have is the credit quality portfolios, firms with high default probability, medium, and low. Right? So we, we are able to form portfolios of stocks. And that will be helpful when we do a test for profitability. So once we have that information, then in this project, what we do is we use the momentum trading strategy that was developed uh, by Jack Dish and Kipman way back in the 1990s. Uh, and we use that method to, develop, to uh, generate profits for portfolios of stocks. Right? So what you, what you can see here happening is that first we create a historical time series data on Islamic stocks. 
of Asia Pacific. We end up with 188 stocks. Uh, then we, our idea is to see whether the, the quality of credit or credit quality characterization of these stocks uh, actually have some implications for profits. So for that to happen, we need to know what the credit quality of each of these stocks are. And we create the default probabilities using CDS information. Once we are able to do that, then we are able to form portfolios of stocks based on credit quality, so high credit quality to low credit quality, and we have three portfolios of stocks in that in that way. Right. So our our study looks specifically at whether uh, credit quality uh, matters for the profitability of Islamic stocks. That's the idea of this of this paper. Now, uh, so what do we find? Well, we find that low credit quality portfolio earns the highest profit, 7.32% per annum. Uh, the medium credit quality, 5.76. And the, the portfolio of stocks that have got the best credit quality, means lowest default probability, earns about 2.64%. So if you look at the, the difference between the portfolio of low credit quality and high credit quality, there's about 5% difference. So your choice as an investor in terms of deciding where you want to invest in these three portfolios is very clear, right? And that's what we wanted to bring. There is quite clearly a credit quality story in, in, in the work that we have just done on this paper. So that's, well, that's what we do. And of course, there are other reserves we do, including robustness tests and all that. So that, this is briefly uh, what the first paper is about. All right, so one more thing we then do is uh, we know that the um, uh, the quality of stocks, Islamic stocks, have implications for profits. That that is very clear from our work. So we know that time series data from 1980 to 2014 is profitable at seven percent on average, 7.32 percent for the low credit quality stocks and uh, two point something for the high credit quality. The next question, or the last question we answer in this paper about that is, what, 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 what are the determinants of those profits over time? So for example, can we use the commonly uh, known uh, market risk factors to model profits? Right? Uh, and so what we do then is we create the risk factors. So these are the well-known, uh, you know, if you're doing work in, in uh, Asset pricing in finance, you know the pharma French factors. So you've got the SMB, HML, uh, and so on, momentum factors. Right? So what we create the, and as you would also know, there are no uh, uh, risk factors for Islamic stocks. Why? Because you know, there was not, the data was not there to do the uh, risk factors. So because we compile a new data set, we are able to uh, we are also able to uh, construct the pharma French equivalent uh, risk factors for Islamic stocks. Right, so now we have a time series factor for SMB, uh, HML, and also we do another uh, betting against beta risk factor. So essentially what I'm trying to say is that we use the commonly uh, known market risk factors uh, as determinants of profits, and we run a time series regression model where the dependent variable is the time series of momentum profits, the average of which I showed you in the previous slide. And then we just run a regression model. The idea is that if the alpha uh, from that regression model is statistically significant, that means that uh, Islamic stocks, uh, the profits are due to mispricing. If the alpha is insignificant, that means all the risk factors you are using to model the profits explain the profits. And that's exactly what we find. We find that the profits that I just showed you are due to the, uh, due to the market risk that investors take. Right? There's no mispricing of Islamic stocks, at least in our story on the 